Pride, it's your boy Sabio, back at again with another reaction video, and today we are getting into Karma's Army Part 3. You guys really seem to enjoy the first two, and I really enjoyed it as well. It's kind of like watching those compilations of bullies getting what's coming to them, like where somebody will be bullying someone, and that person like turns around and like judo kicks them and knocks them out, and everybody's like, oh! It's like that, but you know. BTS. And so um, I'm really happy to get back into the series. There are other series as far as BTS that I need to start, but I wanted to finish this one before I get to that. Don't worry, I haven't forgot. If you've been watching on the channel, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If not, then um, stick around and you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, I decided to wear this dang shirt that I got sent by you guys today because it just seemed fitting and also because this shirt is awesome. I didn't know who was who at first. I knew that the top one was RM because, you know, the forehead action and the shades. But I asked and you guys let me know which one was Sugar and which one was Hobie. I knew that it was the three of them, duh. I knew it was a rap line, but I just couldn't tell Hobie from Sugar at first. But uh, I love it. I think it's awesome. I'm filming this one video with the sleeves on before I, you know, you know, I go to town on and cut sleeves off. But I wanted to show you guys this amazing shirt and I thought it fit the vibe of this video or at least the other videos in this series and what I'm expecting this video is going to be. So I'm hoping that you guys like it. I love it and I thank you guys so much for it. So without further ado, we're going to get into this video and I will see you guys on the other side. Peace. Hello armies, some of you have been asking me for another Karma is an army video, and I also said that I will make a part 3, but I never really did it. In <laughs> fact I was gone for so long, but BTS is back and now I'm also back to fulfill my promise. First of all, I didn't intend to hate any other groups in any ways, and excuse me for grammar mistakes, cause we been new I sucks in English ha 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 ha. Now let's start. What's up with the, the video of... I think that was June with 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 the super nails and the the hoodie and the okay just explain please. On August 11th, Big Hit announced that for the first time since debut, BTS will be going on an official extended period of rest and relaxation. In this announcement, Big Hit clearly said that BTS will return and continue their activity after their short vacation. But some people saw that as a sign that BTS will never come back again just like 1D. Goodbye BTS, we saw what that period of rest work out for One Direction. Oh I feel sorry for the ones who seem to think it is only a two months break. Honey, literally 1D have been saying the same thing for years. Are they back? No okay, I, I guess I kind of see where these people are coming from with the whole oh we're going on hiatus thing because Fans do that a lot so they don't have to break all of their fans' hearts and be like, hey, we broke up, even though in this case, the, the specific group they're talking about for sure broke up. Like, a, the, the hiatus came after a member left the group, like a, a messy leaving too. So um, not really the same. Clearly, BTS has all of their members still, so yeah. But I, I get the thought process, but I, I guess just the, the snarky douchebag way of wording it is, is kind of annoying. If in the actual announcement they're saying, hey, we'll be back in X amount of time and we're going to be doing these things. That's not the same as we're going on a hiatus indefinitely. Indefinitely is the important word there because that means until further notice, like you're... You're not going to see us together again for a hot second, a.k.a. until we go on a reunion tour because we've all fallen off. Not specifically One Direction in this case, but you know what I'm talking about, like bands, they'll be on hiatus for 25 years and then they'll go on a reunion tour or have like a Vegas residency. I didn't read that whole email, but based on what the person who made this video was saying, if it came with and when we come back clauses, then... Like, okay, all right, whatever, let's go. No, but believe what you want to believe. LMFRO, BTS literally still have seven years contract with Big Hit, and before they were going on their vacation, Big Hit already announced their upcoming Speak Yourself concert in Saudi Arabia and CL on October. Okay, yeah, that's basically, that. that's my whole point from my last little 
mini rant. If they already have tour dates announced, and on top of that, they had already re-signed their contract before the vacation or hiatus or whatever, then like, what are you really celebrating? Like clearly, if they were going to break up, they would have done it and not re-signed for a contract extension, especially not one that's seven years long. You don't sign a seven year contract when you're on the rocks, on the ropes, not sure if you still want to do this. And on top of that, you don't like plan tour dates. That's not, that's not how tours work at all. That's not how contracts work at all. So at best, you could argue someone could have been leaving the group. Like they, they could have re-signed the whole group with a member or two gone. And so BTS would come back from the hiatus or the vacation looking different. Now, in hindsight, I now know that they didn't, but that's like the farthest that you can stretch that. But to say that BTS is no more as a whole, given contract, a long, almost decade long contract and tour dates, just, that's just illogical. Like th that doesn't even make the, that doesn't make sense at all. You can't even argue that that's a thing that would be possible given the stuff that you already knew coming into that. It's impossible for them to disband just like that. And no, they are not 1D, they are BTS. <laughs> you sounds ridiculous. If you compare BTS situations with 1D, I'm not gonna talk about 1D issue though. But the T is, BTS is BTS. They are still together, and they are happy about it. That's all I'm gonna say. Also, we all know BTS is already back from their vacation. So what you gonna do about it? <gasps> Let's move the back from... So basically, they took half the necessary time. Instead of taking the full two months, they came back a month later. Wow, that's, uh, I bet the haters feel stupid. Probably not, because then they, then they would stop and there wouldn't be four of these videos. But, you know, um, here we are. On their vacation. So what you gonna do about it? <gasps> Let's move to the next case. Do you still remember how some people said that BBM as top social artist is a paper award and how it's a form of Western validation? Here, listen to what they said. Do they really think that paper award is prestigious award? Like seriously, it's their only pride. It's kinda sad. Billboard is more irrelevant. Most especially when they win social paper award. Not even music related. This is- Hold on, so this, these tweets are from November 2017. I, in my completely unaware of K-pop mind in 2017, knew who BTS was. Like I knew of BTS, I knew that they existed, literally living on the opposite side of the world of them. So with that being said, they weren't small at this time. I mean, obviously they weren't as big as they are now because they just keep growing because duh, hashtag stand talent, but they weren't small. So I'm sure that they had accomplishments. Yeah, especially because this is like four and a half years into their career. So they had accomplishments. So what is this whole, oh, this is their only sense of pride business that that's happening? Like, did, did... also, is this the first time they won this award or the second time? Cause I know in the last Karma video, maybe the first one, I don't know, one of these Karma videos, it talks about the first time that they won the award, but I know that you guys in the comment section told me that they ended up winning it again for a second time. So is this, that same, which, which time is this? Okay, just, just just let me know the years. This is the truth, and for K-pop group it's really irrelevant. The difference between the real medal from Korean government and a paper card replica award from BBMA. Laughing in karma, ha 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 ha. Earlier this year they ended up voting for those irrelevant paper award and wanting for those Western validation. And this is their defense for it. Loud as you want. It's not us that telling this BBM -er denominated my fave with your social award in the first place. Blame that BBM -er, and as long as my fave nominated, we will vote. I mean, that's literally the reason why armies were voting for BTS in 2017. But they said it was irrelevant, a Western validation, a paper award, blah blah blah. And suddenly it's all okay. It's now a worthy award because they wanted to vote for their faves. So, 
I'm sorry, these pictures of June are hilarious. So basically this is pure jealousy. Oh, if it's for you, it's trash and worthless, but if it's for me and or my faves, then it's, it's amazing, it's great. In the last Karma video, they talked about um, some people were backpedaling where they, they thought the award was stupid until, like when BTS got nominated for it, and then the next year, they were like begging for their group to get nominated for it. I don't know if this is the same group, because I know like a bunch of fandoms have issues with ARMY, but um, yeah, very interesting and super hypocritical, especially on the internet, where, where we got receipts, dog. We could go back and look through your history of tweets and see you said this at this date, at this time, at this location, and now, right now, in the present, well, in, in whatever present that is, now you, you changing up your tune. It just makes you look dumb. Like, whatever you're arguing about, you look dumb. Don't be backpedaling, okay? Don't get me wrong. I have nothing against the group. It's good for them, but it's just annoying. How most of those who's praising their faves recognition in the West were the one who belittled BTS and armies because we got those said recognition before them. And not only that, they also said that the only award Bangton can win are a paper award. But hey, Karma wanted to say hi because earlier this year BTS were nominated for top group award at the BBM as. And on May 2nd, BTS is the first and the only Korean act to win top group award at the BBM as. I was about to say, they won that, right? Like, I'm pretty sure you guys told me in the comment section that they... Because I asked in the last video if they ended up getting nominated for anything else later. And you, I think you guys told me that they won this. So I was going to pause and be like, hey, didn't they eventually win this? And then five seconds later, they told us. They are also the first and the only Korean act to win top social artists oh, wow. for three consecutive years. Legends indeed. <gasps> now we gonna talk about Platinum Certificate. After Love Yourself Her sold with 1 million copies on December 2017, some people accused that it was a Sajiji because BTS didn't get platinum. The hell is a Sajiji? I'm, I'm not even sure if I'm saying that right because I know this is like a robotic voice, so it might not be, you know, the little Google Translate voice might not be pronouncing that right. So, you know, excuse my pronunciation, but uh, Sajiji, we're just going to go with how they said it. What is that? Platinum plaques for that. Platinum plaque is a proof that a group sold one million. My fave has certified platinum plaques for all their albums that sold one million in Korea. Your fave not receiving one is just another proof of sale manipulation. They outsold but still don't have their own platinum plaque. Where is your platinum plaque? You don't get those immediately. Like, in fact, plaques usually take months to get sent to you. So, weird flex, but okay. They, they wouldn't, I don't care who you are, Justin Bieber, Drake, Beyonce, you're not getting your platinum plaque in a month of your album being released. So that's that's like literally not how that process works. So, so what's the, why? Like what, what do you, what are you, are you, you're just showing that you don't know how the industry works at all. These things have to be tallied, they have to be verified and verified through a third party company. Your record label can say, hey, this album, act, whatever, sold this amount of units, but it after like the 80s, you have to, there are companies in place to verify album sales, digital, now that that's a thing, as well as physical album sales, uh, streams and the like. And so that process is not, that's happening for everybody. Like all music being released, especially all major label music being released. So that's not a process that just happens in a month. And you can't verify a million something, whatever the, the number was, 1.5 million, is that, is that what it was? 1.5 million sales in a month. That's not how that works. And then it has to be shipped to them and it's like in a pretty casing and stuff. You've seen it. If, if you've ever seen like a documentary or a music video or a movie in a big time famous uh, recording studio, they'll have the plaques. Uh, record that were recorded in said studio up on the wall and they come with like the little picture and the name and all that doesn't happen quickly so you're looking dumb boo for those who don't know sajiji means chart manipulation oh okay it's usually defined by a company bulk buying copies of their own albums in order to get higher on the charts 
and BTS has been accused for so many times. So, for the record, that is a thing. Uh, I'm not saying BTS does that. I'm saying that record labels will buy in bulk large amounts of their artist album to shoot them up the charts and to encourage other people, those people we call sheep, to also buy the album because it's like, oh, well, this album's selling so well, then obviously this artist must be great. Well, I don't know if BTS was big enough in 2017 to just outright buy over a million copies of an album, but that's not cheap. I don't know how much BTS albums are running for, but that could go anywhere from 10 to 25 million dollars. Quick maths, that's a lot of promo on the front end and not necessary for groups that are already so big. That's more of like a debuting artist type of thing where they, the record label wants the, the debut to be strong in that first week sales. And so when Billboard or whatever the Korean equivalent to Billboard is, post the album sales for the first week and you look in the you know hot 200, which is like the top 200 albums being consumed, because it's not just sales, streams are also counted in that as well, but it's the top 200 albums being consumed according to all these different metrics that they use. I don't work at Billboard, so I don't know all of them off the top of my head, but they use a bunch of different things. And so buying over a million copies of your own album in the first week would be very dumb to do on an artist that's already established and that's growing. And that's a, that's a huge promo budget. I don't know what their promo budget is, but that could, that could run them, like I said, anywhere from 10 to $25 million, depending on how much said album costs. And that's just for album, like that's just to get the album sale snowball running. That's not including, you know, getting it played, like getting spins on radio networks, which also cost money, by the way, which is part of the reason, part of the, that in politics, music industry politics, is the reason why you don't really hear independent artists on uh, like major radio networks. You also have to pay to get them uh, like broadcasting, any type of broadcasting anything. So if they're doing an award show, um, if they're like a comeback on an award show, if they're doing any type of like commercials or uh, getting the song placed in movies, um, video games, except like the promo budgets are literally the entire reason that, that record labels exist because without them, now given the internet, artists could basically do the rest of it themselves, but most people don't have $20 million laying around. Like most people aren't like Jay-Z, Beyonce, Drake, you know, whatever, don't have $20 million sitting around to, to get all of this stuff, get all the wheels turning, so to speak, to help you know that such and such person is coming out with an album. Now, ARMY will know whatever BTS is doing, but like other artists, if you see, you're scrolling through Instagram or Facebook and you see an ad for an artist who you don't really mess with that much to know exactly what they're doing, but you have listened to some of their stuff before, or you see an ad for a new song or album or whatever coming out, they had to pay for that. Those are, those are Facebook ads. Instagram ads, all that stuff, not only do you have to pay for it, it's expensive depending on how wide you wanna cast that net. And the fact that they specifically marketed to you is also a whole other thing about them watching you that they're always watching. Big Brother is watching. That's a super long rant, sorry, I, I was on a tangent. But the point is that that is not a, a good way to spend your marketing budget for an established artist and even if you were going to do Sujiji, you would not do 1.5 million copies worth of Sujiji. Like you would go to all of the the WalMarts in LA and buy all of the the album. You don't you don't do like the units that this is is done with is not the units that BTS is pushing. So it doesn't even make sense to argue that at this point they'd be doing that, especially given all the other numbers that they're racking up in other arenas that are much harder to fake and manipulate. For this case, there's actually no official recording sales certification in Korea. Ages ago, there was an organization in Korea that used to do certification. Okay, I know. I just, I just got out of a super long rant. This will be quick. Y'all are dumb. How... 
how are they supposed to have a plaque if there is no company to give them a plaque? Also, how does your group have a plaque if this company doesn't exist? You lying? There's no other way to, to explain that unless they got plaques from like the R... RIAA, which is like the American equivalent of it. So maybe they sold a million copies in uh, the US and equivalent markets. But regardless, that whole process I explained about that not being quick, that is that is through the American companies. So that still wouldn't even make sense. So um, either they're lying or they're just dumb and don't understand how the process works. But now, if you haven't skipped through my rants, you shall not be dumb and you shall know how the process works. 5k was gold and 10k was platinum. That organization okay. stopped doing certifications and currently there's no organization that certificates music. Okay, sorry. I know. Real quick. So that 5k gold, 10k platinum thing is way different from how sales are tallied in the US. The process in the United States is 100k for gold and 1 million for platinum. So that's much, much higher numbers. Now the US has much, much more people than Korea does. So that's fine. And not every company has to certify at the same amount. A lot of them do now just to kind of keep an industry standard. But yeah, if you're getting plaques from the RIAA, that is what it is. People only really talk about platinum and gold. You can also go diamond. Nobody's really doing that anymore, but going diamond means that you sold 10 million copies and Really, the only people going diamond are like Garth Brooks, Elvis, Michael Jackson, The Beatles, maybe one of those Justin Bieber projects, maybe like Believe or Purpose. I don't, it's not common. 10 million copies sold is far, far, far from common. So uh, most people talk about the gold and platinum because those are much more attainable goals. Okay. Sick in Korea. This proves that BTS didn't do any Sajiji just because they didn't get platinum plaques because the organization itself is non-existent. We don't know where the other group got their platinum plaque. That's what I would that's know. the fact. For now, BTS already got five golds and two platinums which certificated by RIRA. Other than that, Love Yourself fans are also eligible for RIRA platinum certification. R and Love Yourself tier is eligible for RIRA gold certification in last September. Let's say thank you for Queen Karma. <laughs> this time we are going to talk about BTS solo project. Oh, Just Lord. like how some people always underestimate BTS as a group. They also underestimate BTS solo project. In 2017 there's an article that said, Namjoon failed solo attempt, and it proves that he's nothing without BTS. This article was posted after Namjoon's collaboration with Wale. Yeah, that was a collaboration. And it so, the one member of BTS who was most established coming into BTS, who is also one of the primary writers and producers for BTS, and on top of that, is the leader of BTS, is somehow nothing without BTS. Hmm. It was not a solo attempt. He never attempted to be a soloist, and if you still remember, when Bang B Aww. He asked him to choose between BTS and Solo. He answered confidently without a doubt that he will choose BTS, so it's crystal clear that he never ever attempted to be a soloist, and it makes this article sound like a joke already. And the reason why this article said that Namjoon failed was because they compared the views from BTS official MV with Namjoon and Wale's collaboration MV, which I think was really dumb, because you can't compare those. BTS MV is official. There's a promotion for it so everyone will know when the MV will be uploaded. We know the exact date, exact day, exact hour, and we were waiting for it to be released. Meanwhile, our M and Wale's collaboration was so sudden, it was out of nowhere. I still remember, when it came out I was so shocked, because I suddenly got a notification from Big Hit on YouTube, and it turns out that they were releasing Namjoon and Wale's collaboration MV. To compare two songs just randomly doesn't make sense because not every single BTS song is going to perform the same video-wise, charting-wise, sales-wise, that's, that's literally not how that works. But also, 
to say that he is nothing because he went on and had a video that performed with 4 million views, that's not nothing. A lot of people leave groups and like literally fall off the face of the earth. We never hear from them again. And they're selling like 20,000 units. So that's dumb. Like most, and when I say most, I mean like 95% of individual members in groups ever won't be as big as the group was itself because duh when when there's a group there are multiple people for fans to connect with multiple people who fans can um well, be attracted to can relate to personality wise can like their their style of music and what they add to the group so when you go solo you don't have that duh not everyone is beyonce like just to just to call it a buck, like most people don't go on to be bigger individually than they do in their group. So to to measure people by that metric is kind of dumb. And it, it very often doesn't happen that way for very clear and concise reasons that you, you don't even, like I need no musical knowledge to be able to understand that and whatever groups you like, It'll probably work out that way too. I don't know too much about non-BTS K-pop groups, but especially out here in the West, like that happens all the time. Groups break up and maybe one person ends up with a semi like successful uh, solo career and it's never as big as the group was you know, in their heyday, in their prime, but all other four or five members don't end up being nearly as successful as they were with the group and that's not an indictment on the members that's just how that's how things work like group people who are fans of groups are not always fans of every single individual member as they go out and spread their wings creatively this whole thing is dumb like the, all the claims in this video just don't make sense at all when you look at them through through any type of logic let alone through any type of understanding of how the music industry works <sighs> There's literally zero promotion for it, so it's understandable why it didn't got as much views as BTS official MV. It's a baseless judgment. If you said he was failed just because of that, and not only this article, some people were convinced that BTS solos will be flop. On that note, can't wait for BTS to disband Dumb. and flop their solos. Big hit no. That BTS will flop hard if there is solo and subunit. They don't even have solo activities. J Hope's mixtape will flop cause no one from BTS. Were, were these tweets before all them started releasing solo stuff? Because I've literally reacted to solo stuff from half of the boys in the group already. And I've heard solo stuff from the majority of the rest of the. Like, you, you get my point. They all have solo work. So, like, what. What. <sighs> Why, it doesn't make sense. Like I don't, I don't get these claims. How old are these tweets? TS can be successful solo. Just look at Namjoon and Suga's solos. L and Row. They aren't my faves. In fact, most groups don't have members with successful solos. Let's be real. The truth is that any member of BTS that has solos will flop. They just ain't that relevant on their own. They aren't as relevant as my. So. This person decided to say, most people who go solo will flop, acknowledge that, and then somehow use that as an indictment of BTS. How? Basically what you're saying is, the sky is blue, and because the sky is blue everywhere, the sky being blue over your house makes your house trash. What? Like, like you're, you're basically saying this is a thing that happens commonly, so it's going to happen to you guys, which you don't know yet, but if it does happen to you guys, that's because you're trash, even though this happens all the time, so just everyone is trash? My favorite, that's just the T. First of all, BTS solo project is different with other groups' solos, because BTS solos wasn't official. It's just their way. To improve their producing skills, writing skills, rapping skills, and singing skills. No one forced them to release a solo work. They just did it because they want to. There is no promotion for it, and they release it as a free track. 
I think that's cool kind how they like focused this. on BTS instead of debuting as a soloist. That's more healthy for the group relationship in my opinion. So please understand about this first. And now we will talking about BTS solo projects and this will be kinda long. So you can sit down and eat your cookies while watching this. <gasps> they said BTS solos will flop because they thought Namjoon and Joongi's mixtape were flop. I will assume they were talking about Namjoon's first mixtape. It was called RM and it was released on March 2015. At that time BTS were still small, so anything coming from them will most likely get a little attention. That's why Namjoon's first mixtape wasn't known worldwide. It was not necessarily flop, because BTS themselves didn't that big either. <coughs> August D was released in 2016, and it was the most awaited mixtape at that time. And two years after it's released, August D has risen to number three on the US iTunes album chart. On Spotify the mixtape has accumulated over 4.5 million listens in less than 24 hours after it was available on Spotify. And now, Augusti's Spotify stream has surpassed 73 million. Iconic. <coughs> now let's talk about <coughs> Hope World. When it was released, Daydream MV was the fastest MV to surpass 1 million like. And <coughs> Hope World peaked at number 1 on iTunes in 50 regions. Thus Hobie become a pop soloist with the most number one, beating the previous record by GD. And now Hope World has surpassed 160 million streams on Spotify. Meanwhile J-Hope is the most followed Korean soloist on Spotify with 2 million followers. And following the huge success of CNS collaboration with Becky G, Hobie now holds the record for soloist with the most iTunes for songs category. He is nowhere near flop. He outsold everyone. <laughs> On October 21, 2018, Namjoon announced the release date of Mono Playlist, which was only two days after this announcement. Before the release date, this person said Mono will never reach number one, because they think Mono can't beat a song which was a soundtrack for a popular movie. But three hours after it's released, Mono easily peaked at number one on iTunes in 78 regions. Three weeks after. Mono become the first Korean album to achieve number one on iTunes in 90 countries. It makes Namjoon become Korean soloist with the most number ones on iTunes. So basically, BTS is just a team of Jordans actively trying to outdo each other. I mean, not trying to, but like their records actively trying to outdo each other. They're just beating their own records. Like it's, it's not even, they're not even competing against anybody else. They're competing against each other again on the charts not in our hearts Ooh, on the charts not in our hearts Ooh, yeah anyway i don't want to hear any bs in the comment section about oh they're not competing against each other ot that's not what i'm saying you know that's not what i'm saying shut up that's crazy though like the i'm bringing back war numbers because in 90 i don't know what itunes classifies a region as like if, if a region is inside of a country or outside of a country but regardless 90 of them is a lot. That's 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 a lot more than me. That's a lot more than you. That's a lot more than all of the people who are hating on them. So um, wh where's where's the flops? I don't I don't see no flops. I can't find the flops. Like I just if this is a flop, if them beating everybody else is a flop, what does that make the people who they were being compared to? Like I I don't I don't get the metrics that people are using to judge them by at all. This whole video has made no sense to me for album category and he still hold this record until now also on may 15th mono has surpassed 100 million streams on spotify so flop where failed where namjoon is a legend period <coughs> now let's talk about vocal line solos i'm gonna make it short because there's too much information already jimin's promise broke the 24 hour soundcloud record with 8.5 million global streams which also broke drake's record and now it's surpassed 100 which, million which global Drake song? Oh, it doesn't say. Okay, never mind. Streams which also broke Drake's record. And now it's surpassed 189 million streams. T. Hyung's scenery gained 5.95 million streams in the first 24 hours. And it also had the most likes in 24 hours on SoundCloud. Crazy. Now it has surpassed 151 million streams. Jin's this night accumulated 5.58 million streams in 24 hours. It was the most commented song on SoundCloud and the most reposted BTS song in 24 hours. 
and it's currently the seventh most streamed and fifth most liked BTS track on SoundCloud. For Jungkook, we are still patiently waiting for JJK1, but I'm sure it will also have amazing record once it's released. So, the whole point of this is BTS solos ain't flopping. There is no flop in BTS dictionary. Thanks. Those who said BTS will flop if they released solo works. Congratulations, you are a whole damn circus, sir. And calm. Congratulations, you played yourself. Like, just, jeez, is there any record these boys don't have? Like, come on now, this is ridiculous. There is indeed an army. Ha 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 ha. And that's it for today's episode. You can share your opinion in the comments below and subscribe for more tea. <laughs> Ooh, okay, so that was that was long. Sorry, guys, I I didn't want this video to just be like, they suck. Boo! I wanted to explain from like an unbiased standpoint how I knew that these people had no idea what they were talking about and that the claims that they were making were not just out of hate but out of straight up ignorance because it's one thing if this video is just like oh they're talking about my faves I hate them you know like that's you can blow that off but like if I'm detailing hey this reason, this reason, this reason, this reason, this reason, all make you dumb. Like, it's it's a lot harder to argue with, but I'm sure some people will be mad. These videos tend to get lots of savory comments, and uh, I'm, I'm petty, so I'm cool with it. But uh, thank you for everyone who is still here. I appreciate everyone who stays to the end. I'm not gonna do like that cringy thing of, oh, if you stayed this long, comment Chucky down below. But like, you know, just, I'm thankful. I appreciate you guys, and uh, hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you were entertained by my series of mini rants and um, mini as in M-A-N-Y, not mini as in M-I-N-I because this ain't nothing about those rants are short. But um, yeah, I, I had fun making this video. There is one more, I think. I don't know if this channel still makes these videos or if they have plans to make more in the future. I'm sure BTS hate will not stop. So yeah. But uh, I believe that I was told that there are four of these. So um, yeah, if you guys are interested in seeing that, definitely make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And we will see you on the channel next time, guys. Have a great day. Peace.